The 6th of June, 1944. Allied infantry and armored divisions begin landing on the Normandy coast in France. This largest seaborne invasion in history marks a turning point in World War II and becomes the beginning of the end of the war in Europe. On the following month, in July 1944, the Soviet forces liberate Majdanek, the first major Nazi camp located in German-occupied Poland. Only after the liberation of the concentration camps, the full extent of Nazi horrors is finally exposed to the world. Because of the demands of forced labor and the lack of food, only a small percentage of concentration camp inmates survive. Compounded by months and years of mistreatment and torture, they resemble skeletons, and many of them are so weak that they can hardly move at all. One of the most infamous perpetrators of this criminal Nazi regime, whose crimes are so brutal that even his Nazi colleagues would despise him, is Martin Zommer. Walter Gerhard Martin Zommer was born as a son of a farmer on the 8th of February 1915 in Schirlen, then part of the German Empire. In 1931, Zommer joined the Nazi party, and two years later, in 1933, he joined the SS. The SS, Schutzstaffel, or Protection Squads, was originally established in April 1925 to protect Adolf Hitler and other Nazi leaders and speakers and provide security for political meetings. SS members were subject to strict military discipline and swore an oath of complete loyalty to Hitler and those appointed by him. In January 1929, Heinrich Himmler became the head of the SS and the organization greatly expanded in size and strength. By the time Hitler came into power in 1933, Himmler had made the SS the dominant organization within the Reich. From the beginning of the Nazi regime, Hitler entrusted the SS first and foremost with the removal and eventual murder of political and so-called racial enemies of the regime. The SS became a virtual state within a state in Nazi Germany and was staffed by men who perceived themselves as the racial elite of the Nazi future. From 1939, the SS assumed responsibility for solving the so-called Jewish question, which then culminated in 1941 when the leadership planned, coordinated, and directed the so-called Final Solution. This solution was the genocide of European Jews during World War II, also known as the Holocaust. SS officers were directly responsible for the management of concentration camps, where millions of Jews were murdered by poison gas. Martin Zommer's career in concentration camps began at Dachau. Established in March 1933, it was the first regular concentration camp built by the Nazi government. In October 1933, Dachau's commandant, Theodor Eicher, introduced a system of regulations which inflicted brutal punishments on prisoners for the slightest offenses. Eicher ensured that the Dachau camp served as a model for all later concentration camps. It also became a training center for SS guards, who were deployed throughout the concentration camp system. During the first year, the camp had a capacity of 5,000 prisoners. Initially, the internees were primarily German communists, social democrats, trade unionists, and other political opponents of the Nazi regime. However, over time, other groups were also interned at Dachau, such as Jehovah's Witnesses, Roma and Sinti people, homosexuals, repeat criminal offenders, as well as so-called asocials, whom the regime incarcerated because they could not or would not find gainful employment. During the early years, relatively few Jews were interned in Dachau, and then only usually because they belonged to one of the above groups or had completed prison sentences after being convicted for violating the Nuremberg Laws of 1935. Dachau prisoners were also used as forced laborers. They were employed in the operation of the camp, in various construction projects, and in small handicraft industries established within the camp. They built roads, worked in gravel pits, and drained marshes, all under terrible conditions. Dachau concentration camp was a place where many Nazi guards, such as Martin Zommer, learned how to torture the prisoners that they supervised and how to get the maximum amount of work out of them whilst they were still alive. In the summer of 1937, Zommer was deployed in the Buchenwald concentration camp, which was one of the largest camps established within German borders. The camp became operational from July the same year. Most of the early inmates at Buchenwald were political prisoners, people who had been arrested for some form of political opposition to the Nazi regime. In addition to the political prisoners and Jews, Buchenwald prisoners also included repeat offenders, Jehovah's Witnesses, Sinti and Roma people, and German military deserters. Prisoners lived in the Buchenwald main camp, which was surrounded by an electrified barbed wire fence, watchtowers, 
and a chain of sentries outfitted with automatic machine guns. At the entrance to the main camp, there was a notorious punishment block known as the Bunker, where prisoners who violated the camp regulations were punished and often tortured to death. A man who was responsible for this punishment block, and who became known as the Hangman of Buchenwald, was Martin Zommer. In the bunker, Zommer kept a secret compartment concealed in the floor under his desk to hide torture instruments and needles with which he shot carbolic acid and air into victims' veins. Zommer often laid the bodies beneath his bed for the night, where the corpse bearers had to remove them the next morning. One of his specialties was the whipping block, where prisoners were forced to count the strokes aloud as Zommer beat them with a heavy stick. If they lost count, Zommer started again. One man, who was sentenced to 25 strokes and got 60 lashes this way, died on the spot. Another Zommer specialty was hanging prisoners by their wrists from trees. Because of the screams of the victims, this torture method became known as the Singing Forest. Zommer had a special hatred for priests. On one occasion, after beating a German pastor, he hung him naked outside in the winter before throwing buckets of water on him. The pastor froze to death. On another occasion, when a Catholic priest performed the sacrament of penance for a fellow inmate, Zommer beat the priest to death. Otto Neururer, an Austrian Roman Catholic priest, fared even worse. In 1938, shortly after the annexation of Austria, he was arrested for attempting to persuade a girl not to be wed to a man of questionable morals. He was then sent first to Dachau and then to Buchenwald. In April 1940, despite suspecting a trap, Neurura agreed to perform a forbidden baptism at the camp for a prisoner who approached him. After he did, he was sent to the punishment block. Martin Zommer hung him upside down and then nailed him to a tree. Practically crucified, Neurura did not scream. Instead, he prayed silently. Otto Neurura was left there for 36 hours before being killed by Zommer. Martin Zommer also starved inmates, hanged them in their cells, poisoned what little food they had, or simply beat them to death with a piece of iron. He also injected phenol, evipan, or air, into the prisoner's veins. In one case, Zommer is said to have crushed the skull of a prisoner with a screw clamp. On another occasion, when a tied-up prisoner received 25 strokes with a stick on his bare buttocks, Zommer hit him so ferociously and so hard that afterward he said to his fellow Nazi colleagues that he had blisters on his hands. Sometimes he even snatched the stick out of the hands of the other SS men and continued to hit the inmate if he thought that they were not being hit hard enough. Many of those who were lucky enough to survive his beatings were taken to the infirmary with damaged kidneys. Another of Zommer's specialties was rubbing the prisoners' backs with steel brushes and then pouring acid onto the wounds. In 1941, Buchenwald caught the attention of Josias, hereditary prince of Waldeck and Piermont. This higher SS and police leader for Weimar had in this position supervisory authority over Buchenwald concentration camp. He decided to investigate the charges of cruelty, unauthorized murder, and embezzlement at Buchenwald. After Waldeck interviewed members of the guards and prisoners, he sent the results to Heinrich Himmler, who allowed him to continue with the investigation. As a result, in 1943, Heinrich Himmler appointed SS judge Dr. Georg Konrad Morgan to investigate allegations at the Buchenwald camp. Morgan found the allegations to be true and Zommer's treatment of prisoners so excessively brutal and sadistic that he put Zommer on a trial at the same time as Buchenwald commandant Karl Otto Koch and his wife Ilse for embezzlement and abuse of the prisoners at Buchenwald. While Karl Otto Koch was convicted and later executed, his wife Ilse was acquitted for lack of evidence. Zommer was sentenced to a reduction in rank and sent to a penal battalion fighting on the Eastern Front to redeem himself. In the Soviet Union, he was wounded in a tank explosion, losing his right leg and permanently crippling his right arm. He was arrested by the Soviet Army and was detained as a prisoner of war until 1950, when his prisoner status was changed from prisoner of war to war criminal. In 1955, as part of the negotiations conducted on behalf of Soviet-held German prisoners by then-Chancellor of Germany, Konrad Adenauer, Zommer was released. After first declaring himself unfit for trial, West German authorities changed their minds when Zommer married a blonde nurse in 1956, fathered her child, and casually applied for an increase to his veteran's pension. Zommer was forced to a physical examination on the 14th of January, 1957, and because his condition had noticeably improved and he was no longer in need of constant care, he was hailed to court. The charge, 53 murders. A psychiatrist's finding on Zommer, legally sane, 
but flagrantly sadistic. During the trial, Prosecutor Paulik described Martin Zoma's crimes as a look into Dante's Inferno. Zoma blandly admitted the beatings and even built a cardboard model of the whipping block to show the court. He also said, I can't claim to have hit the last strokes as hard as the first. You always get a little tired. When being shown a photo of prisoners hanging by their wrists from trees, he was asked, Is that you standing beside the men? Zoma replied, No, we did not hang our prisoners so high. In court in 1958, Zoma denied that he had killed anyone and excused his brutality in the beatings by saying that his youth and athletic physical strength had been abused by camp administration. However, his lies did not help him escape justice. Martin Zoma was found guilty of murder of at least 25 prisoners by injection and sentenced to the maximum punishment permitted under West German law, life imprisonment. When one German, looking at Zoma sitting in his wheelchair, said, You have already paid for your bestialities. Zoma wept gratefully in pity, but for himself. In 1971, however, Zoma was released from jail because there was no facility to continue the treatment of his war injuries. He was transferred to a hospital and in 1973 a nursing home, where he remained for the rest of his life. He was 73 years old when he died on the 7th of June, 1988. There were no tears shed for Martin Zoma. Thanks for watching the World History Channel. Please help us to create more videos by clicking on the donation link. Thank you and see you next time on the channel.